Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another tutorial for Unreal Engine 5 audio stuff. Uh, today I'm just going to do a quick overview of setting up the quartz clock. If you don't know what the quartz clock is, uh, essentially it's just a system in Unreal Engine that lets us be really accurate with triggering and queuing up uh, audio. And the reason that we would need something like this is because using something like the frame rate, which is only, you know, 24, 30, 60 frames per second, 100 frames per second, uh, it's just not accurate enough for triggering audio stuff and loops and music would go out of sync with each other. So we use this uh, much tighter system for timing called Quartz. And I've set up little templates uh, it's, so you can just drag and drop it into your, you know, into your project and get started right away. But basically we play a loop here. Uh, it's in at a specific tempo. We're getting the bars counted in the top left. Now at the end of the loop, in this case, uh, eight bars long, see we reset and the loop uh, replays. So this way you can set up, you know, um, scenes or loops or whatever of different layers stacked on top of each other and switch to new scenes seamlessly without getting weird jumps or, or anything with the music. So here's a really quick overview of this. Uh, oh, just before, if you feel like supporting my work, I've uh, made this downloadable on my uh, itch.io page. Um, I added my own music to it and a few little things to make it easier to drag and drop. So if you want to support me, you can uh, drop me a few bucks. But if not, uh, you can also find this file in the uh, Quartz Music System uh, course by Richard Stevens and Dave Raybould. So a few options there. Uh, so I'm just going to go over really quick how to set up the Quartz uh, clock and how to uh, trigger some audio. We basically have three parts that, that this has been broken into. One is to just set up the clock and uh, get, you know, get a reference to it. Then we also have um, the, the events from the clock so that we can you know, reset the clock and cue the music on every single loop. And finally, we also have this little bit about uh, quantizing and, and playing the sound on the you know, quantized boundary of the bar that is like right at the beginning of the bar. So uh, just really quick, you know, some of this stuff should be familiar. So I'm just going to focus on the main nodes here. We have create new clock, followed by setting up the beats per minute, and finally uh, subscribing to the quantization events. So that's literally getting notified, you know, of all of these different types of events. And uh, to do so, you can just create an event directly off of the, the delegate here, or uh, use this create event node to create a, uh, a matching event. And then we can get all of this information directly from that event. So that's cool. Uh, here we have uh, a few settings, these blue boxes, they're, they're structs, structures, um, and they contain different settings that we can then use to talk to the clock. So in this case, we're setting the time signature, how many beats are in a bar, um, what, what type of beat we have, whether it's a you know, half note, quarter note, etc. So that's basically it to set up the clock. And once it's set up, we're gonna cue the music. This doesn't actually play it. We're just going to cue it, set it up so it's all loaded. So in this section here about cueing music, we have this node create 2D sound. And this is important that we're using create 2D sound here because we're loading it as an audio component. We're loading it into memory and keeping it uh, until we play it quantized at the right, the right moment. So this is different than the play sound 2D that just uh, immediately plays the sound and then destroys the, uh, the reference in memory. Uh, here we're, we're preparing it and then it only gets triggered um, after the, uh, this event has been called. So at this point, we come in, we trigger the, the creation of the sound, then we play it on the, on the boundary, the quantization boundary. So this, in this case, it would be at the beginning of the next bar. And we have another event, a uh, set of events that we get off this, this thing here, uh, play quantized. It's going to say, hey, so... Uh, can you just let me know when this has been queued? And once that happens, then we start the clock. So basically we've, you know, the game has started here. We set up the clock, we queue the music. When the music has been queued and ready to be played qu on a quantized boundary, we actually start the clock. So now everything's running, including the music, because it was already set up to be played quantized. And then finally, we're listening to these events that we subscribe to up here. We have a few different things here. We have the number of bars, how, much, how many bars have passed, 
And we're just using that one essentially to re-trigger the clock. So it's going to say, hey, every time the length of this loop has passed, every time we've passed eight bars, can you re-cue the music and uh, reset the, the transports or reset the uh, bar count? And I want you to do that on the actual next bar. So this is going to count, you know, up to the eighth bar. And on the eighth bar, it's going to set up everything so that instead of going into the ninth bar, we, we go back to bar one. So let's just have a look at this with this in mind. So playing it one more time, we start the clock here. There's a, there's the notice here. We're counting up the bars. This is where we're printing the, the current count. And then on the eighth bar, we reset the clock and re -cue the music and we're back to bar one. So it's just this process. Once the clock's been started, we're just going to continually, you know, re -cue, re, -cue, re -cue. So that's pretty much it. Uh, this is, should set you up for a foundation with the quartz clock. We can get a lot more complicated with this and I'll be diving into techniques in uh, future tutorials. But hopefully this at least gets you up and running because there's not like, I don't know, I don't think there's a super, uh, super easy way about this one or, or that much uh, info on the internet right now about it. And it's a bit weird with the delegates and all this. So I thought I would just show a quick setup. So I hope that helps if you're setting up music, interactive music in your project, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.